In today's video, we're going to take your beautifully painted miniatures and make them into 3D models for use in Tabletop Simulator. This guide is only going to be a quick guide and it's going to just run over the basics. If you want a bit of a deeper dive into these, you can check the tutorial from Dice From Hell or you can also check the video tutorial from Vol SC. Um, both of those will go in the very, very deep details on installing the software, setting up the software and doing all of those things. I'm not going to be covering any of that. But what I am going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to actually make your models quickly once all the setup is done for your programs, basically putting it on very, very quickly using a Mac. All the other guides are for PCs, so if you're a PC user, please go and check those guides out. It will give you all the information you need. But I found doing it on PC, it would take me a very long time to create one model. However, uh, using a Mac, I've been able to get it right from the photo shoot to the exported model in about 20 minutes uh, with a fairly easy system to, to follow. So I'm going to be showing you that today and I'm going to be showing you the program that we use in the Mac instead because on PC you're going to be using Zephyr uh, 3D uh, for taking your photos and creating the, the model. However, that's a PC only program. Uh, on the Mac, there is one program called PhotoCatch, which I recommend. It's just very quick, very easy, and it gives you some really good results. So let's, uh, without further ado, uh, let's just jump right into it. Let's have a look, first of all, at my setup, and you can then try and make your own setup. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but this one works for me. All right, here we go. So this is my setup for when I want to photograph my models into Tabletop Simulator. I have a light box and two lights. You do not need a light box, but as long as you have enough light to basically knock out harsh shadows. What I'm using is just an iPhone for photography. Again, this is just makes it very, very quick and easy. And we're going to end up using portrait mode. When we go into portrait mode, what we can control is we can control the f-stop and we want the f-stop to be f16. This gives us the, the biggest depth and so therefore we shouldn't get too much, uh, too much of the model out of focus. Once we have the f-stop set, then we're also going to knock down the exposure down to minus two so it's at its darkest. This will hopefully give us the best possible light for the model. Then we just simply line up the model and then we're going to be taking a series of photos at a very low angle at first. So we'll go from the front. So I've got about 20 or so photos. That's usually more than enough. And then we're going to get it from a slightly elevated angle and we're going to be doing the same again. There we go, I've got about 23 or 24 photos. Finally, we're gonna take one more position from above. And so we just get a nice overhead shot and we'll go from there. All right, and that is everything that we need to do for taking photos. We're gonna just put them up onto the computer and we're gonna start using the programs. So once you've got all the photos taken and you've uploaded them on your computer, you're gonna to want to open PhotoCatch so that we can create a 3D model. So we're gonna to go to create a 3D model. Now you can do it with video, but I haven't had much success with that. Photos works much better for me. So I click on photos and I've created a folder uh, under Yu Ching named Hacker. And inside here, I've just collected all of the photos together. So I've selected this folder. And I'm just going to hit open. It's going to show me one picture there of the model. Now, you have a different choices for model quality. Preview is going to be a very, very low quality model that it creates and it doesn't look very good. Now you've got all of these other levels of fidelity that it might make. Now, anything from medium, high and raw, um, I've found has too many polygons in and it causes weird things to happen when you try to export um, the model in different formats. However, reduced works fine and it looks great as well. So this is pretty much the right size for use in Tabletop Simulator, in Unity and all of things like that. So we're going to just go ahead and create the model. And when you've done that, it's just going to do it for you and it's going to go through the progress bar until it finishes.
All right, so it looks like we're about done. Let's see if it's made a good model for us. And there we have it. We can see the model just there. Whoa. And it's looking pretty good. Uh, lots of good color in there. I think that's going to look very pretty. So one of the things that we can do is uh, we can get rid of this horrible base that we have here. And so right from this program, we just can go to crop and all we're going to do is first from the y-axis we're going to just bring this right up and we're just going to remove a lot of that base and instantly it puts a nice box around our model framing it just right for us so this is pretty much perfect okay so what we're going to go and do is we're going to go to export and you're going to be wanting to export it as an obj file that's what blender is going to be using to open it so then we're just going to save that I'm going to save it in the same uh, folder that I had the photos in and we'll call it hacker. There we are. Save. Okay. And it's done. We're finished with photo catch. Now uh, with this free version, you can only make one model at a time. So all you have to do to make a new model is you just press the little cross up there, close that and you're back to the start and you can start again. I've already exported the OBJ, so that's fine. Okay. Now we're going to be opening up blender. Now in uh, Blender here, you're going to be wanting just a general one here. There's a horrible camera thing which we don't need. So we're going to press X and D for delete. We've got the sun. We don't need the light source. So that's gone as well. And we don't need the cube. So X and D. Okay. Now what we're going to be doing is we need a base for our models. And there's a special base that you can get. And again, if you go to Dice from Hell, you can find the, uh, the OBJ file for it. Uh, on the on the website to download. So we're just going to try and uh, bring that one in. It's an OBJ, so it's a wavefront. So we go to File, Import, and Wavefront Object here. Uh, and uh, I've got the round bases here. I'm just going to find them. So for the Yu Ching model, I'm going to need my S2 round base, 25 millimeter. You also have a 40 millimeter base for your larger models, 55 for even larger and 70 for the very largest models in the game of infinity. So I'm going to go to 25 and I'm going to bring in the OBJ file that's there. I'm going to import that. And there we go. There's the base. And this is the base that you're going to be using in Tabletop Simulator that has the colored marker to show you the line of fire. All right. Now, what we're also going to need to do is going to need to import the, the model that we made. So again, we're going to go to a uh, wavefront object and import that. We're going to go and find our model. So we had it under Yu Ching, the hacker, there's the hacker and there's the model.obj for it. We'll import it and you probably won't see it because he's tiny. He's so itty bitty or she's so itty bitty. So we're going to need to scale this up a little bit. We don't want to be touching the base, but we do want to be making the model itself big. So we're going to hit over here. We've got scale and then you've got the scaling tool here. You're going to want to hit this white ring here and just pull this out until it's roughly the right size. That's roughly, roughly there. Okay. Now what I find is helpful is to just go and hit a side view. Then we can get our uh, movement tool and we're going to be moving it. First of all, we can use the green and then we can use the blue to move it up. We can kind of check the size. Okay. Maybe it's a little bit big. So we'll hit the scale again and we'll just pull it down a tad bit. Okay. Okay, I think we're about there. What we can always do is we can always put it in a wireframe and you can kind of see it a little bit more easily. We're gonna, oopsie, I thought I was in the, uh, the movement tool. So just make sure you're in the movement tool. If you do make a mistake like that, just control Z and you'll uh, basically redo any of, kind of remove any of the mistakes you just made. Not redo the mistakes you made, but redo the action that you just did. So I'm gonna roughly line it up there. And if we zoom in, you can kind of see it's a little bit uneven on the ground there. So we're gonna actually take this tool here, the rotate tool. I'm gonna to take the inside red one, because that one's gonna be fine movement. There we go. And that's roughly where we want it to be. Maybe actually take it back just a tad bit. There we go. I think that's good. Okay, we're going to hit the Y axis here. It's going to keep us level. And you can see again, it's still a little bit wonky on this axis. So again, we're just going to turn that. And now when we spin it around, it should be straight. There we go. 
we're looking at this part here, not the bottom, this is not important, we're gonna be removing that. But we want this to be level with the other base that we've got here. So using the wireframe, we can do that. Okay, it's looking pretty straight, and because it's hitting the edges here, it should be within the, uh, the, the, the actual base. We can always go to the bottom of the model and we can kind of see, yep, it's kind of there. All right, we're gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay. Um, what we're going to want to do now is we're actually going to want to remove all of these uh, these extra bits at the bottom so it doesn't stick out or make any problems for us. So to do that, we've got to make sure that our model is selected, which it is, and then we're going to change our object mode. No, it's not selected. We're going to click it and we'll go a lighter orange, and then we're going to go to object mode and we're going to go to edit mode instead. Make sure it's on the wireframe. So we're on the wireframe here so that we can see all of this. Uh, we're gonna get this here. We're gonna just make sure we are level with this. And then uh, just make a box roughly there, just in line with the base that you're doing. And you can get rid of all of these bits at the bottom. And it's just gonna highlight the, this part of the model uh, that we've imported. And we're gonna just delete those. So we're gonna press X to bring up the delete option. And then you're gonna be wanting to remove vertices. So V, there we go. And it's removed all of those vertices from the bottom there, all the way around. Okay, nicely done. And we can go back to object mode just to check. And if we go up here, we can click on this one, which is the viewport shading. And it's gonna show us what it's gonna look like as the model. There we go, that's pretty much it. There you go, it's done. Okay, so the model is all finished. It's even facing the right way, that's amazing, but just in case you might find that the model is facing the wrong way, just make sure you're on the rotate tool and then you can just turn it until it's facing the exact right way. Now what you've noticed here is that's probably a good thing to do at the very beginning because what I've done now is I've uh, kind of mucked up the uh, the placement of the the model just ever so slightly so we're just going to pull that back a little bit so it's central turn this one and this is where it's really off and we're just going to pull that one back so it's central and then again it looks pretty good let's zoom out and check have a look at the model and yeah i think that looks pretty awesome so what you're going to want to do next is we're going to export this ready for unity to do that we're going to just make a box around the whole thing. This is gonna select all of the objects that we can see here. And then we're gonna go File, Export, and we're gonna be exporting an FBX. Now again, we're gonna be just calling this one uh, Hacker. And I'm gonna be putting it into uh, the Hacker folder. So I've just got the, the recent folders here. It's very easy to find it, but you can always look wherever you want to put it. I'm gonna put it in my hacker folder, call it hacker. Now, very important, we're gonna be changing uh, the path mode to copy. We're gonna make sure it's the limit to selected objects, the ones that we can put the box around, and the object type is only gonna be a mesh. Everything else can stay the same, but make sure you've done all of those things correctly. And then we're gonna export the FBX. There we go, and that's done. Okay, we're finished with Unity for now with this model. If you've got multiple models to do, I tend to batch, uh, batch work the whole lot. Uh, uh, but for now, we're just doing this one. We are finished here. So we're just gonna close down uh, Blender. So the final step for preparing it for Tabletop Simulator is basically to load up the model into Unity. Um, you're gonna need Unity Hub and then like the actual, um, the actual version that you're gonna need as well of the editor is a 2019 April 40F1 uh, is the name. Uh, again, there's a lot of detail in the Dice From Hell um, a website, so please go and check it there and see how to set it up. It takes a little bit of a, a do to get it going, but once you've got it going, it's pretty straightforward because then all I have to do is click and load it up. Basically, um, a Tabletop Simulator only uses this very old version of Unity to create its models. If you use anything that's newer, it doesn't really work properly, so this is the optimal version to use. Okay, so it takes a little moment to load up, but here we are, we're in it. You can see this is all of my JSA that I've loaded into the program, but what we're gonna be looking at here is, I've got quite a lot here. So um, we're gonna be going into our assets here, and we go to examples, and in our examples, I've got my JSA, so I'm gonna make a new folder here, 
and we're going to call this one Eugene. Okay, and then I can put all my Eugene into here. Now I'm going to make another new folder in here. This is just for tidiness sake. Um, and we're going to call this one the hacker, which is the one which we've just made. So go and find the file that you just exported from uh, Blender and you're going to find there's going to be an FBX and an FBM folder. You're going to both want both of these, so highlight them both and then just drop them down into Unity. And that's going to just create it here. And you're going to see my model is just right there and we're just going to grab that. I'm going to just pop that in. Boom, there we go. We've got it in, Infin we've got it in Unity. Um, Right, there is an option here. This is probably gonna be turned on with the light source. And to be honest, it's just a pain. So just, just switch that off. There's a little light, just switch it off. And then you get it nice and flat. You can just see everything. It's nice and simple that way. Okay, so we're gonna just click on the model. It'll hopefully click on everything there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to need to make sure that we centralize this whole model. So position is gonna be X is zero, Y is zero, Z is zero. Now, also you're gonna have to change the scale to make it the right scale for Tabletop Simulator, which is 0 0.4 for the X, 0.4 for the Y, and you guessed it, 0.4 for the Z axis. This is now, the model is now actually the correct size for use in Tabletop Simulator. So he's right there, yoo or she's right there. Okay, now, um, at the moment, if we export this as it is, it's just gonna fall through the table because it has no physical properties. So we've gotta give it something to bake, bake is it, put it into the game where we can actually move it around and uh, manipulate it and it has some physical value. However, we don't want the whole model to have physical value, otherwise it's gonna be bouncing off of lots of things. So we're gonna just make this very small cylinder that's gonna hold it together. So to do that, what we need to do is we just go to assets. No, we don't, we go to game object. And we go to 3D object and we go to cylinder. And boom, we've got this big cylinder here. This one is much too big. So we're gonna be changing the size. First of all, the position here is gonna be the X is zero. The Y we're gonna actually change to 0 0.1. And this should put it just where we need it. And the ZD axis is zero. Okay, the scale as well is where we're gonna be changing it. So what we want here is 0 0.7 for the X axis and for the Y axis it's 0 0.1, the same as its position and the Z axis is 0 0.7. What that's gonna now make is this wonderful little uh, cylinder that's sitting inside the base, gives you a bit of wiggle room when you're actually using it in Tabletop Simulator not to collide with things on the very edge of your model. So you'll be able to easily get into close combat without, um, you know, you can do base to base touching without things flipping out and going crazy. Okay, but at the moment it looks wrong. It doesn't, shouldn't be seen. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get rid of the mesh renderer. So we're just gonna click on these three little dots here. I'm gonna remove the component. There's also a capsule collider. We're gonna remove that as well. The only thing we want, the only component is gonna be this, a mesh collider. So we open up the mesh collider and there it is. It's right sitting on there. Okay, uh, what we can do with that as well, we can we just name this, rename this to a mesh collider. 25 millimeter, make it nice and clear what its job is. And you'll see over here that we've got it listed. It's a separate entity to the actual hacker. What we want to do is we want to bake this into the hacker. So I'm gonna just do the drop down. You see it's all blue. This means that it's kind of fabricated. It's all been put together. What we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on the hacker and we're gonna be unpacking the prefab. There we go, and they've all gone white, and that means they're free to move around. They're all separate entities again. We're gonna just drop the mesh collider into that group there. We're gonna then make sure that the front badge, this one here, goes to the very top. This is very important because in uh, Tabletop Simulator, it's gonna look at your prefab, and the very top line is gonna be the line that it actually can edit the color of and change the tint of. And this is the one that we want to change the tint of. So this one must go at the top. Once that's all at the top, that's all ready. Now, if we go down into our assets list here, there's gonna be a, a place called uh, prefabs. This is the prefabs and we're gonna be dropping it into here. But I'm just gonna make a new folder ready for my Yu Ching. And we're gonna call that one Yu Ching and then 
We're just going to open that at the moment. It's empty. But what we're going to do is we're just going to grab this one here. It says hacker at the top. I'm going to drop that one into there. And look, it's just created a new prefab all ready to go. Right now, what we need to do is make this into an asset bundle that we're going to export into Tabletop Simulator. So we're going to click on the hacker and down here it says asset bundle. We've got the picture of it here. It says none. We're going to make a new one. So there we go. And we're going to call this one Yu Ching Hacker. And I'm going to put ZS so that we know it's made by Zombie Sashimi. Okay. And click off that. Click it again just to check. It will make it will put it all into lowercase if you put it in uppercase at all. And that's ready to go. Right, once you've got all your models there, you just go to assets and you're going to go to the very bottom where it says build asset bundles. Boom. And we're going to build asset bundles and it'll just take a minute just to load up all of those asset bundles and prepare them all. Once they are done, you are then ready to load them up in Tabletop Simulator. So you're going to want to open up Tabletop Simulator now. All you need to do is go to Create. Single player is fine for the time being. And uh, we don't really need this. So we'll just take this, this strange table that we have in here inside a church, I guess. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit Objects. We're going to hit Components, Custom. And then we're going to be opening up our Asset Bundle here. And we're just going to click for one Asset Bundle. Uh, to be put in and here we've got the main here what we're going to do is going to find the file that we used for it so I'm just going to go and find the file that I use So open up the folder where you keep your asset bundles and I can find my Eugene hacker uh, asset bundle that we just exported and we're just going to open that one and we're going to put it onto the cloud so that when I play it with other people they'll be able to see it as well upload that's going to just take a moment. There we go. It's uploaded and I can leave all of the other things alone. I'm just going to press import and boom. There we go. Our model is now in Tabletop Simulator. How cool is that? And you can spin it around. You can use it any way you like. You can change the tint of the, uh, the base. So I'm going to hit it green. There we go. Look at him, her even. Look at her. Oh my God, having so much trouble today. And she's done, ready to be used in the game of Infinity. Now, one thing you want to do as well, though, is probably go to Objects, Components, uh, Tools. Maybe you want to create a bag. You can put all of the models that you've created into a single bag. I imagine I've got lots of them. And then you want to right click and save the object. Okay, this is my Yu Ching hacker. There we go. I'm going to save that. And it is done. There we go. There's the table all loaded. And let's just pop it in here. Objects. Saved objects. Got it right this time. And um, I got my Yu Ching hacker will be the last one of the last things there. There we go. Let's pop that down. And inside you can find my model, which is now ready to be used in TTS. I can play around in Infinity. There we go. And that's how to put your model into the game. Now, there are some other things as well. You want to put in information of the stats and things like that. But again, you can find that from Vol SC's uh, very, very in-depth video. I'm hoping this was just a quick one to show you how to import them via the Mac and to do it fairly, very quickly and making it look pretty damn good. If you are interested in playing with some of my models that I've made, I've recently put the JSA that I've painted up actually onto the Steam Workshop so that you can actually use them in your games as well. If you are interested in playing Infinity on Tabletop Simulator, I do recommend checking out the 3D Infinity Miniatures Project. You'll find all of my JSA on there, along with uh, the limited number of Shazvasti that I've also uploaded to the project. Hopefully I'll be putting up more soon 
as well, but please check that one out. It's really, really good, so I recommend that a lot. Thanks very much for watching. I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you did enjoy this content, please make sure to like and subscribe, maybe leave a comment, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.